In this lecture, I will discuss the several different types of simple machines and the mechanical advantage that simple machines provide to us. First, let's define what a machine is. A machine is a device or an object or a system that is used to transfer energy from one place to another, allowing work to be done, which otherwise could not be done easily. What that means is that, in general, machines multiply the force or effort exerted by an operator to allow for work to be done. Machines give us leverage, also known as mechanical advantage, in doing work. Simple machines give a mechanical advantage, abbreviated MA, in several different ways. For example, they can multiply force, for example, a car jack does that, multiply speed, the gears on a bicycle do that, or change of direction, which is done by a pulley system. There are six types of simple machines. Those are the lever, wheel and axle, the pulley, inclined plane, the screw, and the wedge. In this lecture, I will discuss the first four simple machines in this list. Here are some examples of simple machines. A claw hammer is a lever when used to extract a nail from a wooden board. A pair of pliers is also a lever. The handle on a door is a lever as well. Two examples of a wheel and axle would be a car wheel and also the knob on a door. The pulley is another type of simple machine. There are several different kinds. We have block pulleys used on sailboats. We have hoists and then we have essentially block pulleys used on cranes. Next we have the inclined plane which is simply a plank that is used to elevate a load from a lower level to a higher level or lower a load from a high level towards a low level. Then we have the screw, which essentially is an inclined plane that is wrapped around a post. And another example of a screw would be the auger of a snow blower. And finally we have the wedge, which is simply two inclined planes that are in contact and the wedge is used to either separate two objects apart from each other or also it is possible to be used to keep an object in place, wedge it in place. The energy transfer during the operation of a simple machine can be described very simply by using the equation of simple machines. Since simple machines transfer energy from one place to another, the principle of operation is very simple. It is based on the fact that the work that's input into the simple machine is equal to the work that is output by the simple machine. We also know that work done uh, by a force is calculated as the product of force and distance by which an object is moved. And so therefore I can replace the input work and the work output with their equivalent expressions in terms of force and distance. The equation of simple machine looks like this. The effort force times the effort distance is equal to the resistance force times the resistance distance, where Fe stands for effort force, and that is the force that is applied on the simple machine by an operator. SE is the effort distance, and that is the distance to a fulcrum or an axis of rotation from the point where the effort force was applied. FR is the resistance force, which is usually the weight of an object that is being moved, so for example lowered or lifted above ground. And SR is the resistance distance and that is the distance to a fulcrum or an axis of rotation from the point of application of the resistance force. 
So as you can see here, both the left and the right side must be equal to each other. However, the individual terms on each side can vary. We can have a very small effort force applied at a large effort distance from a fulcrum or an axis of rotation. And then as a result on the other side, we can have a very large resistance force applied a very short distance from a fulcrum or an axis of rotation. And so this essentially means that the simple machine has multiplied the effort force to lift a much larger resistance or weight. And so this is the basic principle of operation of simple machines. A small effort force is applied a large distance from a fulcrum or an axis of rotation. And then as a result, on the other end, a very large resistance is possible to be moved, but that is located a very short distance from an axis of rotation or a fulcrum. Now let's uh, define what the mechanical advantage or MA of a simple machine is. The mechanical advantage is defined as the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force. So the mechanical advantage is equal to FR divided by FE. As I explained on the previous slide, the effort force is always a small force, but because um, the simple machine multiplies effort, the resistance force will be larger than the effort force, which then means that the mechanical advantage would be always larger than one. And then also the mechanical advantage is just a coefficient, just a multiplier, and it has no units because it is the ratio of two forces. So there will be no units associated with the mechanical advantage. So the mechanical advantage is a force multiplier, and the mechanical advantage is always more than one, always bigger than one. If you're calculating mechanical advantage and you get a value less than one, it means that you most likely have flipped this ratio. From the equation of simple machines, which we discussed already right here, I can rearrange the terms to get the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force on the right side. And then on the left side, I will get the ratio of the effort force distance to the resistance distance, which means that I can write a second expression for the mechanical advantage in terms of the ratio of the two distances. And the mechanical advantage in terms of the ratio of the two distances looks like so. That is the ratio of the effort distance to the resistance distance. Remember that when I talked about the equation of simple machines, I said that the effort force is small and it's applied a big distance or a large distance from a fulcrum or an axis of rotation. As a result, on the other side of the simple machine, we get a large resistance, uh, that a large resistance can be moved, but it has to be a small distance from the fulcrum or an axis of rotation. And so then this ratio here of the effort distance to the resistance distance will be also more uh, bigger than one because the effort distance is larger than the resistance distance. And so those two definitions of mechanical advantage can be used depending on the problem that you're solving to find what the mechanical advantage is. And also, if you know the mechanical advantage already and one of the other two variables, you can calculate the third one. I discussed the mechanical advantage of a single simple machine, but it's also important to understand how the mechanical advantage of several simple machines working together is calculated. When several simple machines work together, the first simple machine in the series is going to um, produce an enhancement of the effort force. And so this enhancement then is going to be the effort force for the second simple machine, which on its um, turn, it's going to um, increase the resistance that can be moved um, after that. 
So this resistance now can be used as an effort for the third simple machine in the series. And then the third simple machine will produce an even larger uh, resistance force, and so on and so forth. And so that means that the mechanical advantage of the first simple machine will be multiplied by the mechanical advantage of the second simple machine, which will be multiplied by the mechanical advantage of the third simple machine in the series, and so on and so forth. And so, to summarize, the mechanical advantage of a system of simple machines working together would be equal to the product of mechanical advantages of the individual simple machines. And this can be written in an equation form as the mechanical advantage of the entire system of simple machines is equal to the mechanical advantage of the first simple machine times the mechanical advantage of the second simple machine times the mechanical advantage of the third simple machine, and so on and so forth. Another important property of simple machines is the efficiency. The efficiency of a simple machine can be calculated as the work output divided by the work input times 100%. And in terms of the resistance uh, and effort forces and resistance and effort distances, that would be the product of resistance force and resistance distance divided by the product of effort force and effort distance times 100%. Efficiency is therefore a percent value and efficiency is never 100%. And that is because there's always some loss of energy in the process of transferring energy by the simple machine from the operator to the resistance. And that is because there is always some friction that is involved in the operation of the simple machine. And so as a result, the work output is always a little bit less than the work input, but the closer this ratio is to one, the better the efficiency of the simple machine. Now that we have all the definitions in place, let's discuss several different types of simple machines, write down the equation of simple machines specifically for each of those and show some examples just to illustrate how the calculations are done. The first simple machine that I will start with is the lever. A very simple example of a lever is a balance beam like this. We have the beam, we have a fulcrum that is uh, about which this beam can swing or rotate and so on one end, I can apply my effort force. And then the distance from the point where the effort force was applied to the fulcrum is the effort distance. And so when the effort force is applied as shown, then the other end of this lever is going to go up. So that is the resistance that is going to be moved, so therefore that is the resistance force. And then the distance from where the resistance force is applied to the fulcrum is the resistance distance. And so then the equation of simple machines for lever looks like so. The effort force times the effort distance is equal to the resistance force times the resistance distance. Exactly the same as the equation that I started with when I was talking about the equation of simple machines. The mechanical advantage of a lever can be calculated as the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force or the effort distance to the resistance distance. Based on the position of the fulcrum with respect to where the effort and resistance forces are applied, there are three classes of levers. Class one, for example, a pry bar is the lever that I just discussed where the fulcrum 
is located between the effort force and the resistance force. Class 2 lever would be, for example, a wheelbarrow, where the fulcrum is located on one side of the lever, and then the resistance force is located between the fulcrum and the effort force. And class 3 lever is a lever such as this hanging sign here, where on one side we have the fulcrum, on the other side we have the resistance force, and in between we have the effort force. It, it doesn't matter which, kind, which class of lever you will be dealing with, the equation of lever remains the same. So regardless of which type class of lever you're dealing with, the equation that you're going to use for that simple machine is just this one, and the mechanical advantage is calculated this way. Let's look at the following example. A pry bar is used to remove a nail from a board. If the force applied is 10 newtons and the handle is 40 centimeters long, what force will be exerted on the nail 10 centimeters from the fulcrum? So let's sketch the problem. So here is a sketch of my pry bar. This is a class one lever from the previous page, like so. And so the effort force applied on the pry bar is 10 newtons and it's applied 40 centimeters from the fulcrum. On the other hand, a nail is being extracted, so the force at which the nail is being pulled from the board is the resistance force. And the distance from the nail to the fulcrum is the resistance distance of 10 centimeters. The question is, what is this resistance force? Well, to solve the problem, I'm going to simply apply the equation of simple machines for lever. Or resistance or effort force times effort distance is equal to resistance force times resistance distance. I know all of these except for the resistance force, which is what I'm solving for. So I'm going to rearrange the terms in the equation to solve for FR. So FR is equal to FE times SE divided by SR. Replacing the values, that is 10 newtons times 40 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters, or the resistance force is 14 newtons. So I want you to notice here that I did not change the units for the two distances because um, I have one of each distances on, I, uh, on one side and the other side of the equation here. So as long as those two distances have the same units, that is good enough. We don't need to change them to be meters because when we do the calculations, the units will cancel, such as in this example here. The only, again, uh, requirement is that the units are the same, but they do not have to be meters specifically. Okay, so now I can also ask one more question, and that is, what is the mechanical advantage of this lever? And so the mechanical advantage is defined as the resistance force divided by the effort force, which would be 40 newtons divided by 10 newtons, so that is equal to 4. This is bigger than 1, so therefore the calculation is correct and has no units because I'm dividing two forces by each other, so the result has no units, it's just a number. And so this is the force multiplier by which the effort force was applied to produce the resistance force. And just to show you that I get the same result using the other definition of mechanical advantage, I will calculate the mechanical advantage also as the ratio of the effort force to the resistance force, uh, effort distance to the resistance distance. So that is 40 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters, which is also 4. Let's look at this uh, example as well. A wheelbarrow is loaded with 50 kilograms of sand. The load is 50 centimeters from the wheel axle. What force is needed to lift the load if the handles are 1.5 meters long? A wheelbarrow is a class 2 lever. And so the diagram for that lever looks slightly different than the diagram in the previous example. 
the fulcrum is at the wheel, the wheel's axle right here. The load is located in the bucket here. And the effort is applied at the end of the handles. So the effort force is applied here. The effort distance is the length of the handles. The resistance is applied where the load is, and essentially that is the weight of the load. And then the resistance distance is the distance from the load to the fulcrum. The equation that um, will be used to solve this problem is the same equation as the previous example. The effort force times the effort distance is equal to the resistance force times the resistance distance. The difference now is that I'm looking for the effort distance. So let's see what information we know. So we know that the mass of the load is 50 kilograms, which means that the weight of the load or in other words, the resistance force will be 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That is 490 newtons. We know that the effort force is applied 1.5 meters from the fulcrum. So that is the length of the handles. And we know that the resistance distance is 50 centimeters. So now notice that the two lengths have different units, which means that before calculation, I must make the units the same. Let's change the units of the resistance distance to meters. So 50 centimeters is equal to 0.5 meters. Now I can substitute all the known values in the equation of the lever and solve for the effort force. The effort force is equal to the resistance force times resistance distance divided by the effort distance. So that is equal to 490 newtons times 0.5 meters divided by 1.5 meters. And that is equal to 163 newtons for the effort force. Let's also calculate the mechanical advantage of this simple machine. The mechanical advantage will be equal to the effort distance divided by the resistance distance, so that is 1.5 meters divided by 0.5 meters, that is equal to 3. And you'll get the same result if you divided the resistance force of 490 newtons by the effort force, which is 163 newtons. The next type of simple, uh, simple machine is the wheel and axle. A winch is an example of a wheel and axle simple machine. So we have a cylindrical drum around which a cable or a rope is wound and an object is being either lifted or lowered by this um, cable. And <clears throat> the rotation of the drum, the rotation of the drum is provided by applying force to the handle that's attached to it. The whole device rotates about a central axis of rotation. So the force that an operator will apply to make the winch rotate will be applied at the handle. So that is where the effort is applied. So that is the effort force right here. And then the distance from the handle to the axis of rotation, this distance, that would be the effort distance. Now, because this simple machine is essentially undergoing only rotational motion, in the sense of rotation, the effort distance is renamed effort radius. R E, so that is the effort distance. Then the cable that is attached to the drum of the winch will be moving a weight, so that would be the resistance force. And then the resistance distance will be the distance 
from the axis of rotation to the side of this drum. So essentially that is the radius of this cylinder. So that will be the resistance distance R sub R. And so then the equation of simple machines for wheel and axle looks like so. The effort force times the effort radius is equal to the resistance force times the resistance radius. So one more time, the effort radius is just another name for effort distance due to the geometry of the problem. Here we have only rotation. And R, R is the resistance radius, which is another term for the resistance distance. And this is in the context, again, of the geometry of this simple machine. The mechanical advantage is calculated exactly the same way as before. That's the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force, or that is the ratio of the effort radius to the resistance radius. The next type of simple machine is the pulley. A pulley is a grooved wheel that can rotate about an axle. And by the nature of attachment, there are two types of pulleys. There are fixed pulleys and then there are movable pulleys. So for a fixed pulley, the pulley is fixed to, let's say, a ceiling. A rope or a cable is running over the pulley. On one end, we have the load attached and on the, on the free end, an effort force is applied. So when the effort flo force is applied down, the load is going to move up. A second option is to have a movable pulley where for the cable, we have one end attached and the other end is free and then the pulley is hanging on the cable. The load is attached to the axle of the pulley. So when the cable is being pulled up, the load is coming up. The equation of simple machines for pulley is exactly the same as for the previous simple machines. The effort force times the effort distance is equal to the resistance force times the resistance distance. And the mechanical advantage is calculated as the ratio of the resistance force to the effort force or as the ratio of the effort distance to the resistance distance. What I will explain in a slide further down uh, the presentation is what the meaning of those two distances is, the effort and the resistance distance. And I will also introduce one more way to calculate the mechanical advantage of a system of pulleys. Let's look at several different configurations of pulleys and how the mechanical advantage of those different configurations is calculated. So I will start with a fixed pulley and I want to lift a resistance of one Newton. So pulling on the free end and measuring the force necessary to lift that one Newton of resistance, I find out that the effort force must be also equal to one Newton. And so therefore the mechanical advantage of this particular pulley is equal to one. And so uh, this basically means that this pulley is not necessarily very useful as a simple machine. The only thing that this can be useful for is to lift light objects above uh, ground. For example, that is used in flag poles. But it doesn't really give us advantage as far as force multiplication. Now let's look at the other option, which is movable pulley. So here is my movable pulley. Now the one end, one end of the cable is connected, is attached. The other end is free. That's where I will apply the effort force. The pulley is hanging on the cable and the load is attached to the pulley. So the resistance now is two Newtons. And if I measure the force necessary to move those two Newtons, it turns out that that would be equal to one Newton. So the effort force here is one Newton. Then the mechanical advantage is the resistance force divided by the effort force, and that is equal to 2. 
So now this is different than the previous example with the fixed pulley. So only changing the configuration of the system increases the mechanical advantage. Notice that the difference here between the two examples is that in the first example, the cable is being pulled down, while in the second example, the cable is being pulled up. Okay, let's look at a different configuration. Let's have two pulleys now. One is fixed and the other one can move. My cable is attached to the axle of the fixed pulley, goes around the moving pulley, then goes back around the fixed pulley, and then I pull on the free end. So if I have a resistance of two newtons and measure what force is necessary to move that resistance, it turns out that that is going to be an effort force of one newton. So the mechanical advantage of this two pulley system is still equal to two. So I haven't gained mechanical advantage compared to the previous example. The only difference is the direction in which the rope is being pulled. Here's a different assembly of pulleys. Now we have four pulleys, two are fixed and two move. Um, so the cable starts from the axle of this second fixed pulley, goes around the first moving pulley, around the fixed pulley again, the second moving pulley, the second fixed pulley, and then the free end is being pulled. So if the resistance is four newtons, a measurement will show that the effort force here will be equal to one newton. So with this pulley configuration, one newton of effort force will move four newtons of resistance. So the mechanical advantage then here is equal to four. Now let's look at a different configuration that also has a mechanical advantage of four. This configuration has three pulleys, one fixed and two moving. So the cable starts from the fixed pulley, goes around the first moving pulley, around the fixed pulley, and the second moving pulley. And the load that's being lifted, the resistance is four newtons. Me a measurement of the effort force here shows that the effort force is equal to one newton. And so the mechanical advantage here is equal to four, just like with the previous configuration of four pulleys. So now I notice something interesting. Um, if I count the number of strands of the cable supporting the weight, that is equal to the mechanical advantage of the pulley system. So for in example A, the number of strands supporting the weight is just one. This is the only strand that supports the weight. The free end here does not support the weight. So the mechanical advantage is equal to one. In the second example, we have two strands of the cable that support the weight. Strand one and strand two. Because the moving pulley is hanging on the cable. So both, si both ends of the cable support the weight. So mechanical advantage of two. In this example here, the third example, we have one strand, two strands supporting the weight. That is the moving pulley. So therefore the mechanical advantage is two. In example D, we have one, two, three, four strands supporting the weight or the resistance. And the free end here does not support the resistance. So therefore the mechanical advantage is four. The last example we have one, two, three, four strands supporting the weight. So the mechanical advantage is four. So now we see a pattern, and the pattern is that the mechanical advantage of a system of pulleys is equal to the number of strands of the cable that support the weight or the resistance. So the mechanical advantage of a system of pulleys is equal to the number of strands of cable supporting the resistance. And this can be written as um, a mathematical relation as the mechanical advantage is equal to n, where n is equal to the number of strands of cable supporting the resistance.
So notice from the previous slide that when the cable is being pulled down, it doesn't count towards the number of strands supporting the resistance. But when the cable is being pulled up, then it does count as the number of in the, into the number of strands supporting the resistance. Now I want to explain what the two distances, the effort and resistance distance, mean in terms of the pulley. So for simplicity, I will just um, use a single fixed pulley. The resistance is attached to the cable that runs over the pulley, and then on the free end, the effort force is applied down. So when the effort force is applied down, the resistance will move up. All right, so after some time, the resistance now is all the way up. And if we look at the difference in levels between the initial position and the final position of the resistance, that distance here will be the resistance distance. So basically, this is the vertical distance that the resistance travels. Uh, when the effort force is applied. And then at the same time, if you look at the distance that, or the length of cable that was pulled as the resistance force was, as, as the effort force was applied, then that length will be the effort distance. So again, when the effort force is applied on the free end of the cable, a certain length of cable is pulled for the resistance to be uh, lifted a certain height. So that length of cable is the effort distance. And at the same time, the height to which the resistance will uh, move is the resistance distance. So in the context of a pulley, that's the meaning of the effort and resistance distances. The last simple machine I wanted to discuss is the inclined plane. So the inclined plane is a device that is used to move a resistance from, let's say, a ground level to a certain height above ground level. For example, you're loading something on a ramp, on a truck, or whatever. Essentially, that is a plank that will have a certain length, and it will also have a certain height above ground. And so the resistance here would be the load that is being lifted. So that is the weight of this object. And in order to move it from the ground level to a certain height above the ground level, the, an effort force is applied, let's say, in this direction. And so then, what is the relationship between those four parameters? The effort force, uh, force, the length, the resistance force, and the height. Well, that relationship will be the equation of simple machines for inclined plane. And it looks like so. The effort force times the length would be equal to the resistance force times the height. The mechanical advantage is calculated just like before. That would be the resistance force divided by the effort force, or that will also be equal to the length divided by the height. You can see from those relationships that the mechanical advantage can be increased either by um, decreasing the height or increasing the length of the ramp. So for a fixed height where you want to um, move your resistance, the best way to increase the mechanical advantage is to increase the length. And then that will um, help you use smaller effort force for moving the same resistance. And if you want to move a higher resistance by applying the same effort force, then you definitely must increase the length. And so here the trade-off is longer length of the ramp for the ability to lift a higher uh, or a larger resistance 
above, uh, to a certain height above ground. So this concludes the lecture on simple machines. You will practice those concepts when you do the worksheet next time we meet.